Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this webisode. I'd like to bring in a new business to help share some tips and advice about their industry. And today I have Phil Wolf. And Phil, welcome to the show. Thank you. Why don't you explain to everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Okay. Um, my name is Phil Wolf. I'm with the Insurance Center of Durham. I uh, sell commercial insurance, whether it's for uh, starting out business for general liability, commercial auto, workers' comp, or health insurance. We've got a variety of carriers that we use. We are brokers, so we have, um, it's called the excess and surplus market available also for your specific needs. Okay. Well, the fact that I do, I do a lot of networking, I run into a lot of businesses that are just kind of starting up. Okay. Um, and one question that I know we talk about a lot is, you know, I'm a new business, what type of insurance do I need? So what would you recommend? Sure. So the first insurance would be general liability. That's going to cover whether somebody is coming into your business or you're going to their business and inadvertently, let's say you're, you're at a, um, a business that is a computer center and you walk in with a cup of coffee and the next thing you know, the coffee, you trip, the coffee spills, it uh, hits some electronic hardware and it's fried and also the business owner, um, uh, while you were doing that, you scalded somebody. So uh, general liability is gonna come in for bodily injury and for property damage. It's going to take care of the mischief that you've just caused. Okay. And I know a lot of, um, at least in my profession, when I go out into the world, they require me to have, I think, like a million dollars worth of insurance. Right. So um, general liability will start out at 250, 500, 750, and a million. And then also it uh, comes up to an aggregate, which would be. $1 million for the first uh, incident. Uh, the aggregate might be $2 million. In our office, when we've sat down and analyzed all of the, the, the costs, and we feel that for a business owner, they should have a $1 million of liability and $2 million of aggregate. So the term in the, uh, the lingo in the business is, is $1 million too. And just simply that when you're in a lawsuit, um, that extra two hundred dollars that you saved during the year um, to to have five hundred five hundred versus a million two, um, we strongly believe that you really want a million two um, going forward. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, let's um kind of switch gears and talk about employees a little bit because I know in in the state of North Carolina it's required to have workman's comp if you have three or more employees. Correct. A new business that's starting out a lot of times is a one or two man shop. Sure. So, what happens in that case? Okay, so again, state statute says three or more employees, and that would include the business owner, and if you have a secretary and you have a salespeople, that's, that's your three. It doesn't make any difference if your employee is a W-2 or 1099. If you have three people in your business that's functioning to make it grow, that's where the state statute comes in. But more importantly, Jeff, to address your uh, question is, I would recommend a business owner, if, they, if it is just a one-person shop, the business owner and a part-time secretary, I'm a strong believer in saying that you really need to have workers' comp in place, not necessarily for the business owner, but for your part-time secretary. A scenario might be um, she's there by herself, he or she, and they're moving a box or on a little chair um, uh, near a file cabinet. Next thing you know, um, the f somehow the box slips, the client, your employee falls and, and hurts yourself, what worker compensation does, it protects the business owner from being sued by the employee. So again, state statute says three or more, but you could have one employee, and, and again, if there's a lawsuit brought against you because of a fall, um, they can sue you, and, and literally, as an example with this um, employee, if their injury is severe enough and you don't have the capital, um, you could lose your business, okay? And we would not want that to happen. And worker comp, lots of times for a secretary, is so inexpensive because it's based on, on cents per $100 that you're spending. You'd be better off even with um, a one-person shop to buy workers' comp to have it in place for peace of mind. One, it's protecting the business owner from being sued, and more importantly, it's protecting... Uh, by state statute, what the employee 
can get per week, per month, and it, it sets up the structure for how the claim will be paid and how long versus if you didn't have workers' comp in place, then sky's the limit. Okay. So I would recommend any business to really look at and put in workers' comp, even if it's for one employee. Okay. So this brings up the question, and I, uh, you know, obviously, I well, I use a lot of subcontractors. Mm-hmm. So what happens when they're doing a job for me and they get injured as far as workers' comp? Well, again, it doesn't make any difference that they're subcontractors or W-2 employees. If you have workers' comp in place, they're being taken care of. Okay. And it's based on payroll. So if you only use um, um, work um, these subs uh, three or four times a year, you're going to be covered for the entire year with your workers' comp policy. Okay, great. Thank you for the information. I appreciate that, and thanks for coming in today. And for any of you out there that would like more information on Phil and, or his company, please check out the website at the end of this video. And also, if you'd like to continue this conversation online, please do so by filling out the box below. That's all I have for this time. Until next time, take care.